Hey everyone, this is Nick, and if you're here, you probably really like Linux-based operating systems. But you also have to admit that Linux desktops aren't perfect. There is a small amount of jank in some areas. What I'd like to do in this video is explain why I think that this jank in some areas is what actually makes the Linux experience really great, and that to love using Linux, you kind of have to embrace it. Do you know what's not janky though? Today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Safing. They are an open source company that develops the Portmaster, an all-in-one network monitoring solution. It allows you to watch everything that comes in or out of your network and then block or allow the stuff you want to take action on globally or on a per app basis. Portmaster is free as in free beer and completely open source. And it also has advanced features like filter lists to automatically block ads trackers or malware, and it can enforce secure DNS over TLS for your whole computer. All these features are easy to access thanks to a simple and legible user interface, and you can download it as a DEB or an Arch package. It's also available on Windows if you need it there as well. Safing Sportmaster is still in alpha and looking for users and input. The team is super responsive and you can contact them by mail, on Reddit or directly on GitHub. Follow the link in the description to download Portmaster and give the team your thoughts. Okay, so I'm just going to start by pulling the rug under the feet of a lot of people who are probably already furiously typing on their keyboards to leave a comment under this video. Yes, Linux desktops aren't perfect. Some features are lacking. Some are not as well implemented as some other operating systems might do. And the lack or the missing features probably hurt Linux's mass market adoption. And that's okay. Linux doesn't need to dominate the market of the, of the desktop operating systems. It doesn't need to crush Windows or Mac OS. I'd argue that Linux only needs about 5 to 6% market share to be utterly relevant to third-party developers and be a complete desktop operating system all on its own. In the meantime, though, Linux desktops do have some janky areas, some areas where they need improvement. And that's also what makes Linux appealing and charming, as we'll see in this video and it also might hurt its mass market adoption potential. That's, that's okay. So the first area that people tend to notice is the fact that after a while, a Linux desktop starts to look pretty incoherent in terms of look and feel. When you just install your distribution, you generally only have one desktop environment and the applications for that desktop environment. So everything is actually super neat and tidy. But as time goes on and you'll start installing applications that don't necessarily have alternatives for your specific desktop, things are going to start looking out of place. You're going to have GNOME apps inside of KDE or KDE apps inside of GNOME and their user interface paradigms are just very different. So you're going to have a lack of coherence and cohesiveness in your desktop after some point. Now, I've personally been a strong proponent of sticking to applications that were made for your desktop environment. If you use KDE, use KDE apps. If you use GNOME, use GNOME apps. But sometimes you can't find an alternative that satisfies your needs for your specific desktop. Also, there are some people who really do not care at all about the cohesiveness of their desktop, the Philistines. And why that incoherence isn't such a problem in terms of mass market adoption? Because if you look at Windows, for example, it's been way more incoherent, even out of the box, since the days of Windows Vista. It looks disjointed in all sorts of places, but it still creates some amount of jank because you use a system that doesn't feel designed by a single team or a single company. And in my opinion, that's a reason to actually really love using Linux because you see this difference in terms of styles, of themes, of UX slowly fading away as time goes on. You see a progression. Apps are getting better at picking up the colors you use on your desktop to apply them on themselves. The dark theme preferences are being worked on so every app from every desktop environment can implement dark mode if you turn that switch on. The snaps, the flat packs, they're also starting to work on implementing the support for this cohesiveness, for this coherence. And this gives a sense of progression that you rarely get on other systems, on other operating systems. As you use your Linux desktop and as you update it and new stuff comes in, you feel that these differences are starting slowly to fade away bit by bit. And you really feel that there's a progression, that there's improvements. And each update brings something new and exciting and fixes stuff that were maybe bothering you visually. But a second janky area comes from the very nature of Linux operating systems, of Linux distributions. They're built by stacking on top of each other various projects. 
you have the Linux kernel, you have system D, you have x.org or Wayland, you have the GNU tools, you've got a desktop operating, you've got a Linux desktop, you've got third party applications. And all these projects are developed by different teams with different goals and different visions. And let's say that these goals and visions don't always align perfectly. Now, distributions are built by stacking up these systems on top of each other. And as all things not developed with a common vision, a common team, there's bound to be some friction. Sometimes one project will decide to reinvent how it works, sometimes for good reasons, most of the time for good reasons. The problem is the other systems need some time to adapt to this, to react to this, to decide if they want to adopt this new convention or not. And it creates friction and it creates jank because those systems don't necessarily talk to each other extremely well. Now, the perfect example is the Wayland transition. Moving to Wayland is necessary in terms of security, in terms of performance, in terms of evolving the Linux graphics stack. But the other systems that are built on top of a display server of a compositor, they took a long time to react because it's not the default, it's not adopted yet, it's a completely different way of displaying graphics. And so most Linux desktops are not ready yet. Like GNOME is almost there, but KDE is only reaching usable status on Wayland nowadays. It's taken a long, long time. And that's something you wouldn't have seen if Wayland and the Linux desktops like KDE and GNOME were developed by a single team. From the outside, it might seem that this stack of disjointed projects is creating problems. Now, from the inside as well, to be honest. But if we look at it with a few steps back, we actually realize that it brings a lot of advantages to a Linux desktop because it makes it extremely modular. You can replace virtually any component of a Linux distro by something else. If a distro ships with Wayland out of the box, but you prefer x.org for a reason or another, you can install it. If your favorite distro has the greatest base ever, but only ships KDE and you prefer GNOME, you can replace that and, and use GNOME. If you don't like a certain app, you can change it. If you don't like how your kernel is built, you can use another way of building the kernel with other flags or other options or other drivers. It's, it's super modular. And while it creates a lot of jank in some areas and transitions and evolving this stack is painful and long and difficult, it's also bringing Linux to a very, very modular state, which is an advantage that other operating systems generally don't have. The third janky area is the system stability. Sometimes things break. We all had something break unexpectedly. Or if we're honest, as the result of a stupid command line that we didn't really understand, that we copy pasted and that broke our system. While some distributions are extremely stable, and even the bleeding edge ones can be very reliable, sometimes stuff will break. You wanted to upgrade your kernel because you had to have the latest drivers, and now your graphical session doesn't start. An app doesn't start after an update. Stuff like that happens. And this comes down to what Daniel Foray, one of the co-founders of Elementary OS, calls foot guns. Linux gives you ways to shoot yourself in the foot. It doesn't prevent you from doing so. It's part of the freedom of using Linux. It doesn't prevent you, or at least not very hard, to do something really stupid that will break your system. And it doesn't really prevent application updates or system updates to do the exact same thing. And this creates a janky experience in some cases and for some users. But this janky experience also creates, first, a lot of freedom to experiment, to do as you please with your system, but also ample learning opportunities. If you break your system, you're gonna have to fix it and you're gonna have to learn how it works and how it runs and how to fix your issue. Now, the fourth janky area would be the application support. We all know that Linux desktops don't have access to a lot of applications that a lot of users depend on. Microsoft Office, the Adobe Suite, AutoCAD, the Affinity Suite, Raid Shadow Legends. Okay, maybe not Raid Shadow Legends. This means that for a lot of users moving from other operating systems like Windows or Mac OS, there's a gap that needs to be filled with application alternatives. They're gonna have to replace Microsoft Office with LibreOffice or OnlyOffice. They're gonna have to replace AutoCAD with FreeCAD, uh, Photoshop with GIMP and stuff like that. And these applications aren't UX perfect copies of their Microsoft or Mac OS equivalents. And to be clear, that is not a bad thing these applications were not developed to be clones of their proprietary counterparts. They are designed to be their own thing. They are their own UX, their own workflow, and while they fill in the same role, they do it in a different way. 
But it does mean that when people move to Linux, they're gonna be a little bit lost because these applications don't work like the ones that they're used to. This creates a janky experience at first, and a lot of people tend to think that if something that they know how to do somewhere isn't done in the exact same manner elsewhere, then it means that the new way is crap. But that's part of the Linux experience, in my opinion. That's what makes Linux so interesting. You have to relearn stuff. You have to get out of your comfort zone. And I perfectly understand why a lot of people wouldn't want to do that. They use what they know, what they know works, and they have no incentive to change. And that's fine. But for people who like to learn, Linux provides this learning opportunity that you can't really get anywhere else. So, the Linux desktop. It's a bit janky, weird, wonky, disjointed, whatever you want to call it. It's not perfect and it can't fit 100% of everybody's use case. And that's fine because it also means that using a Linux desktop has tons of advantages that you don't get on other systems. It gives you more freedom. It gives you learning opportunities to get out of your comfort zone, to learn how things work, to learn how to fix your own problems. It gives you ample opportunity to experiment, to change how your system works, looks and feels. And it always evolves, it's always changing, it's always bringing new features, new stuff, fixing the issues that you had in the past. So to really appreciate your experience with Linux, I think you have to embrace all that jank and appreciate that it's the price to pay for all these nice advantages that you can get anywhere else. And you also have to appreciate that some people are not willing to put up with all that jank because after all, they had to learn how to put up with all the jank from the systems that they already know. So this video was made possible by Slimbook. If you don't know about them already, they're based in Valencia, Spain, and they make Linux laptops and desktops for all budgets, all performances, all keyboard layouts, and they ship worldwide. So if you need a new Linux device, I can only recommend them. I only use their stuff nowadays, and I left a link in the description below. So thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't hesitate to like and subscribe or dislike and tell me why in the comment if you thought it was bad. You can also watch all my stuff on Odyssey. I left a link in the description. And you can also join my Patreon subscribers and YouTube members. You'll get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.